Hey everybody, how's it going? So a lot of people have kind of asked me why is it that I ride around the city on a weird bicycle that I put together myself with a modified controller where, you know, like I'm adjusting my integral and my proportional gain myself so that I could tune it to the way I want so that I'm able to ride in the street with cars and keep up and all that rather than just take the subway system and all that like a normal person. And this actually ties in really well with a piece of news that came out today. Suspect arrested in fatal stabbings across New York City subway system. So there's there's been someone who on the A train has been stabbing homeless people sometimes to death and just leaving there to bleed out on the train, which is a pretty effed up thing to happen, pretty effed up thing. But more weird things have been happening on the train system over the past year. I have been taking uh, the train and the subway since I was about 13 years old. So at this point, I am very close to having clocked 20 years in the New York City public transit system. And it... Um, it sucks. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no other way to put it. Whether, you know, a bus or a train is supposed to come at this time and it doesn't come until this time, or whether there's no, you know, air conditioning in the summer, or whether there's, uh, you know, 90 people in a fucking car when you're at the Lorimer stop on the L train, there, or whether the L, the L decides it's not going to go past Lorimer today, or it's going to get stuck in the stop between the Calvin Myrtle. It's, it's, it's just always something. There's always something that is fucked up with the train system. And that is, uh, so about two years ago, I decided, okay, I'm done with this shit. I'm done. I am going to be in control of whether I get somewhere or not attached a motor to my bike. And it honestly has made me a considerably happier individual. Whether I'm going to work, I actually feel more excited to go to work. I don't procrastinate it as much. And I don't procrastinate going home as much because it's actually fun to get around. It's not miserable. I don't have to pay $500 or $700 a month for parking. I don't got to stay stuck in traffic like people that drive cars. And I don't have to worry about getting stabbed. Now, to be clear, this is not something that has been an issue for me uh, throughout the time I've been in New York. There's lots of weird people on the bus and the train. Sometimes I've seen fights on the bus of the train, but they pertain to people's own business. They had their own beefs or their own problems that have nothing to do with me. And they're, you know, they sort it out. Uh, there's been... I, I honestly have never witnessed a mugging on a train. I've never had someone, like, come up to me and threaten me or anything like that. There's been some, you know, people that, that panhandle. Sometimes you got a, a person who's, like, screaming to himself who is clearly mentally ill. But I've never really actually feared for my life while I was on a train, ever. You know, I read these stories all the time about fights on the train, stabbing on the train, shooting on the train, all the time. But I've never actually experienced it. And that's never that's never really been the driving force behind why I don't take the train system. The reason I don't take the train system is because I don't feel like it taking an hour to get home at night. I don't feel like, you know, the, or being in a, in a fucking subway car sandwiched with 90 other people. Uh, it's less like that due to COVID. But now the problem with COVID is that you have... Um, a, a, a lot of uh, eclectic people riding the train that were, were not before. So let's just check this out. Suspect arrest, arrested in fatal stabbings in New York City subway system. A 21-year-old Brooklyn man was arrested in fatal stabbings of two people on the subway trains. Police said Sunday he was taken into custody, charges of attempted murder. One of the victims was found dead in the tra uh, in, on a train in Queens late Friday with several stab wounds to his neck and torso, police said. Two hours later, 44-year-old woman was found stabbed to death in a subway car in Upper Manhattan. Two on fatal attacks, one involving a 67-year-old man and other involving a 43-year-old man, also occurred in Upper Manhattan. Authorities believe all of them were homeless. This is the part that honestly fucks me up. I'm not saying that it's okay that people get murdered at all. I don't want that to be the, how this is interpreted. But the thing that, uh, that weirds me out about it is when it's not about any particular beef. It's, again, it's one thing if, you know, this person was fucking that person's wife so they, they see each other on the train and he kills. I'm not saying it's right, but the, the sense can be made of it. Or, you know, the, the, this drug dealer is hitting on that drug dealer's turf. This person got angry at that person because they bumped into them and didn't say sorry. And then he said, fuck you back. And like, I'm not saying it's right, but sense can be made of it. But when it's just random person decides to stab random person that they don't even know, like, that's... That's weird. That's that. That's the kind of stuff that actually keeps me up and, and freaks me out because there's no sense to it. Because the other stuff you can avoid, you know. Okay, don't fuck your neighbor's wife and see them on the train. Don't sell drugs in the same territory as a, comp a competing drug dealer. Don't um, you know? Don't be an asshole to someone for no reason and then just curse and uh, curse at them like you're invincible or a big man or whatever. All that stuff makes sense, but like random, random stabbings of random people, that's the kind of stuff that, that freaks me out way more than anything else because there's really nothing you can do to avoid it other than luck of the draw, and you don't really have control over it. It says that he, 
They believe that he committed all the attacks. It wasn't clear if he had an attorney who would speak for him. Police leaders say they would deploy an additional 500 officers into the subway system to guard against future assaults. To the victims, the victims' families, we are 100% committed to getting justice to bring closure to the families of this terrible incident, NYPD Commissioner Demarche said Saturday. Transit officials called the 500 extra officers an important step while asking for another 1,000 officers to be deployed to subways and buses to stem the violence. We request teams of uniformed officers to be assigned to every station and that officers ride the system throughout the day and during the overnight to ensure the safety of our customers and colleagues. MTA Authority CEO Patrick Foy and New York City Transit Interim President Sarah Feinberg said in a letter to Shea and Mayor de Blasio. The safety and security of our system remains our foremost priority. We know you share this commitment. And one of the areas where a lot where I am not particularly convinced that that's going to fix the problem. It stems from a case in 2013 where a man got stabbed in the subway and police watched it. And there was actually a, a case about this because he wound up, he wound up um, suing the city or suing the police department for it. There was a gentleman named Maxim Gelman and he went on a stabbing spree in the subway. And there was this one guy. All right, so pretty much what happened here is you have this guy fighting for his life and there was a cop that was actually there and witnessed everything. And at the end of it, when he wound up suing the city, the city said that the cops had no duty to protect protect this guy who subdued a killer. And the reason that this was an issue for him is because he was obviously injured. You could see here from what it, what his head and his face looked like when he got out of it. It's included on the guy's Twitter. And this guy is way braver than I am. I pro If someone takes a knife out, I'm probably running away like a scared little bitch. Just no shame in that. Someone takes out a knife. I'm the fuck out of there. I'm squirming away like if Erica asked Oreo the cat to do exercise. But like, I am, uh, I'm, I'm not fucking with someone with a knife. But he took on a guy with a knife that was on a killing spree, and he won. And the, the, the cop was watching the entire time, and they literally did nothing. So there is a, you know, there's a lot of, um, of skepticism throughout people in the city, including myself, as to whether or not the 500 or 1,000 officers they're going to have going around there are actually going to do anything. And, you know, we are at a time right now where there are heightened tensions in, in major cities between the police department and the citizens, and I really, really do hope that in this time of defund the police, abolish the police, and all that type of rhetoric becoming more and more popular, that when something like this happens, we don't hear a defense of city cops have no duty to protect you from someone attacking you. Because when you have a bunch of people saying defund the police or abolish the police, this, that, and the other, you'll have people on the other side saying, well, who are you going to call when something happens? Well, if something like this happens and you have a gentleman like this whose head is completely bloody because someone who had a knife was attacking him and a cop is literally watching watching and doesn't do anything, and then the police force says he had no duty to do anything, you're not really making the best case for your continued funding. But I sincerely hope that this does not wind up being a repeat of 2013. I am, I am, I'm trying to be optimistic here. Uh, I hope that it is not a repeat of 2013. I hope this doesn't wind up being a case of uh, this happening again. I hope this does wind up keeping the, uh, the, the perpetrators of these types of crimes from actually committing it more into the future. I don't know if that's going to be the case, to be honest with you, because the type of person who's going to do this type of stuff for legit no good reason is probably crazy enough to not care if a cop is there. You have to keep in mind, the guy who stabbed this dude, the guy who stabbed this dude probably saw that there was a cop watching and he, he did it anyway. So like, I'd like to be optimistic and, and, and imagine that this stops this from happening, but I don't know if it will. You know, there's been some, some cases recently in Midtown of people push, you know, there's people that are just pushing people onto the subway tracks as the train comes by. There was this one woman that survived by the skin of her teeth. She wound up being under the train, not uh, at a point where she would get run over by the train. Imagine still somewhat injured. But this kind of stuff has been happening either at a more increased pace since all the COVID lockdowns. I don't know if it's that it's been happening more often since the COVID lockdowns or that people are noticing bad news more since the COVID lockdowns. Either way, it's not particularly a, a happy thing, and it does make me grateful that I have the ability to ride above ground and that I have a throttle so that if someone comes at me with a knife, I can, I, I can, uh, I can get away. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, do you think that it is fair for me to have a little bit of pessimism as to what 500 officers will do after there is literally court precedent that the cops don't have the duty to protect you in this case, or do you think it's going to wind up being a good thing? Yeah, I, I hope it's a good thing. One of the things about being a pessimist is that when you're wrong, the world is actually a better place than you thought.
This is one of the best things about being a pessimist. If I'm wrong, then the world is actually a good place. It's not like, ah, damn it, I was wrong. No, it's, oh, I was wrong. Whew. That's, a gr- that's great. That means, you know, things are probably do, uh, doing well. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. See you in the next video. As always, help you learn something. Oh, shit. I'll pay 10 grand for self-driving, but this car is never gonna fucking happen. Why? It won't even tell me where I'm fucking going! Look at the fucking door handle. I was like, hey, there's a right right to repair with cars, right? Sell me a fucking actuator, so next time when it fucking breaks, I'll replace it myself. They go, oh no, we can't sell you. It's a, it's a restricted item. That's horseshit.